they have a personality. I think that's the thing about working on them. It, each one has a bit of a personality. You have a feeling for the fact. I think it's a thought of, a, of children for generations playing with them and living in a household for years. And it's, it has something about it. It's not just a lump of wood. Meet craftsman Colin Davis, a former crafts teacher who has been busy restoring a historic Victorian era rocking horse called Blackie to its former glory. He's had quite an adventurous life, a, a long sea journey in a sailing ship probably, which is quite amazing really to think. And then he would have been taken to the west because he lived on the west. And I say his first, probably his first trip to the east was uh, since he came in 18 to the hundred. This will be his first trip. He was brought back from the, on the ferry to the east to be fixed. So he'd be living on the east for a while, at least for the foreseeable future. He'll be living in Stanley for a while. He's, he's sort of 98% original, you might say. <laughs> Whereas some, I haven't had to make a new leg or anything for him. He's all, he did break a leg, but it was fixable because he was getting to the stage where he wasn't attractive to a child. He would not have been of any interest to, to, to sort of, you know, missing eyes, no, hurt, no mane, paint gone and everything. So now we've put him back into reasonable order. In the next few weeks, he'll be finished and he should be, as I say, a lo much loved member, I suspect, of a new family. Blackie was created in the United Kingdom by G&J Lines, which began trading in 1860. By the turn of the century, the family business became one of the largest toy manufacturers in Britain and produced a variety of wheeled and rocking horses. Over the years, the company merged with Triang Toys, but the horse in the Falcons lived on before turning up at Collins Shed in Darwin. Mr. Lyons, Joseph Lyons, made rocking horses before the First World War, and this is one of the original ones. Um, it's been handmade rather than machine made. Uh, after the First World War, his sons came home with dreams of machines, having seen tanks and everything, and they, they converted over to mechanically made things where he didn't. He, he was rather upset and wanted to carry on by hand. So this will be an, uh, quite an early horse. You can tell he's a good horse because his head is offset, which is apparently a good sign that the horse has been well made, whereas some of the more commercial ones, the head straight because it's easier that way. Uh, but traditionally, the head is offset to one side. In the Victorian era, rocking horses were very popular and even a favourite of Queen Victoria. For some families, they have become family heirlooms that have been passed down generations throughout the years. As for Blackie, he'll be going on to a new family, continuing to spread joy, all thanks to Colin's restoration. But you've got to remember, he's probably a very much loved part of people's families for many, many years. Many children have probably been very attached to him. And we're hoping to put him back, hoping he'll be back and good for another hundred years or more with a bit of luck. So it's quite nice to think he's going back into the Luxon family, sort of family connections, so that he will be part of that. You know, he's carrying on and will hopefully be loved and treasured by another generation of children. And um, if they keep in touch, I can keep an eye on him if he needs any restoration. Uh, I don't know how many more horses are in the islands. I've heard rumours there might be another horse somewhere but I haven't actually heard for anybody who's got another rocky horse that uh, need, needs a love and attention. It's nice work, I must admit, I do enjoy working on them. They are really fascinating things to work on. <laughs>